kind personally. I've never seen red, and it might be that the red you only see when you um, when you uh, uh, um, use a, like a time exposure. Okay, uh, this is a bubble chamber. A bubble chamber is, uh, uh, I believe, it's like liquid helium, is one of the things they use for bubble chambers. And what they do is they heat it up to the point where it should be boiling, but it isn't. There's nothing for it to nucleate on. There's no no reason for it to boil, right? Um, so they've sort of got like super saturated uh, solution there. And you could, by the way, do this. There's a, um, a story, and I've heard this, of people, if you microwave something in a cup, a ceramic cup, and you get it too hot, you can actually get it hotter than the boiling point of water, and it won't boil because there's no scratches in the cup. There's no places for the bubbles to form. Have you ever watched water boiling in a pot and noticed that the, bo the bubbles come from little spots on the bottom of the pot? If there aren't any spots for bubbles to come from, you can actually super saturate the water. You can get the, um, the water hotter than boiling, right? And then when you put a spoon in, what happens? It, it all boils at once, right? It all just goes boom and flies out of the, the cup and, and burns you. So be careful. Keep in mind that if you microwave water in a ceramic cup that's really smooth, right? It's possible that, you know, I always stand back when I put the spoon in, like, what you gonna do? Right? <laughs> or try not to nuke it too long, right? So this is, this is helium that really is super saturated, it wants to boil, but it doesn't have any nucleation site. When charged particles go into these things, they, um, the charged particles cause the, the liquid helium to boil, and you've seen these tracks are little string, strings of bubbles, okay? Notice that these tracks are curving. Do you see that they curve? They're curving because that you put cloud chambers in magnetic fields, because from the radius of curvature, you can deduce things about the velocity and mass of the, of the charged particles. Now, check this guy out. See this little ram's head here? Okay, what that means, that little ram's head means, and I just zoomed in on that, right? That little ram's head looking thing, okay? What that means is that we got a, a uh, I need a meter stick, I need a pointer. Here's a pointer. What that means is that some particle here emitted something, okay? This is probably pair production. A very energetic particle came in here, and from its, and this is a photon, just like pure energy, right? From its energy, it created a regular electron, and then it created an antimatter electron, okay? This is one of the things that you can do if you have sufficient energy. Notice that they spiral different directions. Do you see that? Notice that, the, that this guy doesn't live quite as long, and that's because an anti-electron an anti will eventually encounter a regular electron, and then, yes, they do annihilate each other, just like Star Trek, okay? So that's one thing that's actually correct about Star Trek, about the physics, right? So, that's what's going on right there. And then let me see if I can get, um, let me see if I can get a, some pictures of those nuclear prominences, or those uh, solar prominences. I've got a really good one. I don't know if we're gonna get to that, but let me just. That's fun. Check out these pictures here. These are, these are pictures taken um, of the sun, and this is the sun is actually one of the cool things to look at with a telescope. Never use the little bitty filter though in the telescope that you put in line with the eyepiece. You always want to put one over the aperture of the of the telescope. They cost about ninety dollars. Okay, never use the cheap ones. Okay, we had a teacher here at the school almost go blind because she used one of the ones that you put in front of the eyepiece and the sun's energy cracked that and then the light got through and it burned part of her retina. Okay, um, anyway, this thing here, if you look at that, if you look at it, do you see that it looks like it is spiraling? I'll look, I'll, I'll find some other ones. Check that one out, does this look like a spiral? Yeah, maybe not quite as much here. I've got actually a really good one in one of my uh, PowerPoints here. It's in the astrophysics one. I know, I can barely, I need, I need glasses. Okay, let's see, stars part, we want, uh, there it is, yeah, check this out, man. Check that, check that solar flare out, yeah? I think we figured out once that like a hundred Earths could fit in this space. 
right? Can you see that, that that is spiraling? Do you see that? Yeah, that's a chunk of plasma, and as it, as it vaults out of there, it's actually following those magnetic field lines is what it's doing, okay? Now, if you can imagine a big one of those that sort of sticks out into space, okay? It's going to snap, isn't it? And it's going to launch that chunk in whatever direction it's going, and sometimes that's toward the Earth. Sometimes those will hit our satellites and knock them out of, out of uh, alignment, out of orbit, right? Um, so this is a huge problem. The other thing it can do is it can induce charges and knock out like uh, power grids, right? So solar flares are really not uh, our friends, you know. But anyway. How about we kill the sun? Yeah, we don't need it.